coming to you from Beit Shemesh, Israel. Uh, you're not familiar, it's a town between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, where I live. And I'm sitting here with Amir Whiteman, who, if you follow me, you've sure, surely seen him on my vlog, like, how many times, five times, I don't know. Right. Anyway, you know, war, it's all everyone's talking about. You know, I just posted, uh, I just posted now, as we're coming here, a, uh, a post about an Israeli startup called Lionsgate that is detecting fraud in crypto, and they just seized tens of millions of dollars of Hamas. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I did interviews on CNN and on Forbes and a couple of other places, and the question everyone keeps asking me is, what's with the tech ecosystem, right? Because everyone knows Israel and Startup Nation and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we're at war and half the country's called up to reserve duty. And so everyone's asking me, what is going on with the tech world? So there's good news and there's bad news, as always. The good news is everyone's stepping up. Everyone's stepping up. Unbelievable things. We have the venture ecosystem, you know, big, big VCs like Sequoia and like, um, what's the other one? The big guys who spent, who are the point billions here? Insight, Insight. Insight, Insight. Who, are, who, are, who are, you know, making announcements that they're raising, cap they're raising money for Israel. It's really unbelievable. Uh, even you know locally, there's a ton of a ton of opportunity, a ton of, of activity. That's the good news. The bad news is, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we are governed by nature, and if half the country is in the army and reserves, you know, this isn't going to sustain itself forever. So it is a, a worrying situation. Having said that, like most things in life, when there's something that's at a disadvantage, that means there's an opportunity. So Amir Whiteman is a general partner at Shempel Capital, where I am a proud advisor. And I wanted to hear your thoughts, Amir, as someone, by the way, who really does play in both, let's call it the diplomacy world. I don't wanna say political, because you're not like a politician per se, you kind yes. of are. Kind of are. Yeah. 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 All right, diplomat, let's call you that. So you play in the diplomatic world, but you also play, obviously, the tech world, you're, you're a VC. So I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts as far as what's happening, what's going to happen, what are some of the opportunities where do you see this going? Just talk to me. Well, first of all, it's very interesting. Uh, there's one um, investment bank uh, which published, um, I, I guess, a couple of weeks ago, an interesting research paper about uh, what happened in Israel in the past, after uh, previous wars, wars yeah. or uh, crisis. Let me guess what he said. Let me guess. Now I'm gonna get a little biblical on you. What does it say about the Jews in Egypt? How did they respond to persecution? I'm gonna put you on this. You went to Yeshiva. The more they persecuted the Jews in Egypt, they multiplied and they flourished. Right. I wrote an article, I kid you not, you could go look at it, many, many, many years ago, maybe like maybe like 10 years ago, on Mashable. Remember Mashable.com? Yes. I wrote an article, the correlation between terror and innovation in Israel, meaning the more they attack us, the more we innovate. You would think it'd be the other way around, but no, that's not how Jews behave. You mess with us, we're gonna innovate. And I gotta tell you one more thing, and then I'm gonna shut up and let you talk. You know Ephraim Goldberg, Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg yeah. from uh, Boca? So he said something that I think is just unbelievable. And again, sorry, I'm getting a little biblical here for one second, but it's beautiful. He said, in last week's Torah portion, uh, Hashem, God says to Abraham, um, let, me just, let me just remember I the Pasuk, the first, hold on one second, it says, uh, right? What does that mean? Those who bless the Jews, those that are on our side, the varechacha are going to get a bracha, are going to get a blessing. But when you get in our face, you would expect the Torah to have said, I will curse them. But it doesn't. It says, Aor, which, which is another way to say curse. But why does it switch language? Right? You would say it says, Right? Why Aor? So Rabbi Goldberg said, This is what it really means. It means if you're on our side, you're going to be blessed. You get in our face, you're going to see our light, our aura. You're going to see our unity. You're going to see all the stuck, all the charity we're doing. You're going to see all the amazing initiatives in the tech world, outside of the tech world. You get in our face, you bring darkness, we're going to bring light. It's wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? It's wonderful. I thought that was beautiful. All right, anyway. So yeah, so so the bottom line is the more they attack us, the more we innovate. How does that manifest? Tell me what you're seeing. Well, so so first of all, that, that uh, paper did say that uh, indeed after every time that there was a crisis, a war or something, then there was a massive rebound. So we're expecting this to happen this, uh, uh, this time again, and I agree with you. Um, there is no doubt that if you want, the more uh, we have to survive, then the more we have to innovate. innovate innovation, uh, I think I wrote about it a number of months ago, innovation is a, a, a response 
to prices. 100%. That is not only true, by the way, here. It's always true, but certainly true right. uh, in Israel. But here's the thing, here's the thing. You know, at the end of the day, the big question that everybody's asked for, for decades, you know, in the book Startup Nation was written about is, how could it be that a country this small, the size of New Jersey, in the worst neighborhood on earth, the most unstable region on planet earth, the Middle East, how is it that Israel became this technology superpower? And the answer is obviously many things, right? Is the army, there's the government. But at the end of the day, you know, when push comes to shove, the thing that really, I think, drives Israeli entrepreneurship and Israeli innovation is the creativity, right? Yes. It's the Israeli mind, it's the Israeli chutzpah, right? That didn't change, that's still here, that's good. right? So, you know, as an, as an opportunity for an investor who's globally investing in, forget, I'm not talking about like charity or donations and support for Israel, that's beautiful. I'm not saying no, but that's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about real opportunity and the opportunity here has not changed, yes. right? We still have those brains. Exactly, and that's, that's what's important to understand. That's specifically true in the tech world. It's not only true there. But what matters is human capital. That is the correct sentence, human capital. Right. Human capital has not been affected. Right. And um, not only it has not been affected, I think it has actually grown because last time we spoke, we were, we, I think it was in the summer. It was turmoil. And it was turmoil, and there's no turmoil anymore. No more. Turmoil. Unity, it's unity. It's complete unity, and I think turmoil is completely behind us. And just a couple of hours ago, actually, uh, they kind of struck a deal for uh, on the judicial system. Did they? Yeah, I don't about it. Yeah, whatever. You you look it up. I just say something. It, no, it's, it's, it's 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 and whatever. It, it because of course you have to do this. But here's the thing, Amir. Let me just say one more. Thing. I, you know, today I'm coming off like a rabbi or something. I'm not a rabbi, yeah. but but I have to say one more thing. Unity, right? Like everyone's talking about unity, but like how important is unity to the Jewish people? The answer is the most important. Everything. But, is but here, but, but here, listen to this. Okay, listen. This is really fundamental. When did the Jewish people become a people? When, when we and Mount Sinai. The, yes. And Mount Sinai, we got the Torah, we became a people, right? Yes. What does it say about the Jewish people at Mount Sinai? We were there at the mountain, unified, like one man with one heart. So the first, the first description, the first way that the Torah describes the Jewish people is unity. So it is at the most foundational, fundamental level of our strength as a people is our unity. And so the fact that we're unified right now, and the fact that there's no more left and right and religious and secular, it doesn't exist anymore, it's gone, means that we're even stronger than we were before in an ironic kind of way. We're in war, but we're actually stronger now than we were yes. before, yes. which means there's tremendous opportunity. It's, 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 it's uh, running around the flag, but I think it's, it's, very, it's deeper because the outpouring of divine anti-Semitism that's happening not only here, but in the world, essentially has reminded us that all kind of things which we have learned over the past yeah. millennia yeah. I have not done anywhere. That's true, and I'll and say something else. To be, to, to be together. Uh, you know, I'm going to say something, I hope, you know, maybe it's not such, an, not such a responsible thing to say in the middle of a war, but I know we're going to win this. We're going to win this and we're going to be okay. You know who's not going to be okay? Jews around the world. I don't know how they're going to get out of this. I don't understand how American Jews are going to get past the fact that Ivy League colleges are teaching, you know, what they're teaching. And I, I don't know. I'm very worried about Jews around the world. I really am. Me too. I'm not worried. Listen, again, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, what we're going through is, is a historical, like, horrible tragedy. But, but I know the ending. We know the ending, right? It's going to end. Well, we're going to win this. There's no other choice. What's going to happen around the world? I'm not sure. So, if, you know, an investor is watching this, he needs or she needs to, like, take a step back and say, okay, yeah, right now it's unstable. Right now there's war. But... You know what's the opportunity here, and yes. I think the opportunity here is tremendous. Yes, the Give opportunity. Some, uh, yes, so the opportunity is tremendous, and I want to say what's the opportunity, also what's the challenge, and how we can overcome the challenge. Yeah. So the opportunity, as I said, is that there's going to be rebound uh, 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 in a unified society, which whose purpose has been renewed. That's deep down the opportunity, and I think that all the companies here have got what they say in Hebrew, sakin ben right. They have uh, a hustling. We're hustling. Right. Everybody wants to, is, is, we want to win. We're hungry. Everybody's hungry, exactly. That's the, that's, the, that's the right word. So that's the opportunity, macro. The challenge, of course, is that many people, as you have correctly said, will be investing money, but many are going to be scared and it's going to take them a while um, to come back. And this is why also I thought it's a good idea that we, that we have this chat because I want uh, uh, through your microphone actually to, to reach out um, uh, tell, me something, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your companies. Yes, so uh, I want to tell you that most of our companies, six out of seven, have got no issues now of runway. In other words, um, they are doing fine because they raised money uh, relatively recently and there's no 
pressure. So we're okay. Uh, thank God nobody has been, in our companies, nobody has been uh, hurt so far. And, but, but we think that's how it's going to stay. Um, but I can tell you that we have one company whose runway will probably end in the next few months. You can't say which one, I assume. I can't say now. But, well, can, you, uh, can you tell me, tell me about your second companies? But uh, so we have three Actec company. And by the way, I want to tell you that as we speak, we are getting interest from uh, significant investors. Um, I'm going to be extremely unspecific in the Muslim world and oh, wow. in, the, in the Arab world. Oh, wow. As we speak today, wow. literally. And uh, this is very important to know this because I want to I want everybody to know that behind what you see, there's the behind the scene. And there are very, very powerful and significant players who want to actually do business with us. Um, that makes me happy to hear that. Yes. And uh, you're going to be even happier when you know exactly who, who they are once I tell you after we Pretty sure I can figure it out, but anyway, go on. Yes, <laughs> okay. so, 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 um, so, the, so we have three ag tech companies. It is amazing because- Ag, ter- ag, ag tech, agriculture. agriculture. So that's amazing because in terms of impact, I feel, you know, we, we're making the world a better place. You can feel it. In a real way. In a real way. Not, not like, like uh, yo, we're making the world a better place. Like no, real, no, like, real way. Yeah, yeah. So, so the last company where I invested is a company called uh, Tritoscope. So it's actually uh, having sensors in the trees to optimize the water and uh, nutrient uh, 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 consumption. Wow. So you're saving a lot of water. Wow. Just for you to so it understand. Knows, it knows when the tree has enough. Yes, wow. yes. So, so it's amazing. And, and I want to tell you that's something that's, that's really special. If we could save only only 2% of uh, the global's water consumption of trees, that would be equivalent to saving the entire consumption of all the households in America. Wow. wow. And if you ask how much water are we saving with uh, these uh, with uh, uh, these uh, uh, sensors, it's between 30 and 40 percent. Some wow. places more. Wow. So what's the website? So tritoscope dot com. So T R E E T R E E T O tree like a tree. Yeah, the T O scope T O scope dot com. All right, that's one tri- one company. Give one. Another one, one. Yes, another one is a company called Clarifoot, which is amazing because it's great. It's doing Q A. Um, sorry, Q C. Quality control. Quality QC. control. Okay. Right. It's QC on 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 the fruits and vegetables. So the idea here is that uh, it's the, around forty five percent of all fruits and vegetables are lost in the food chain, essentially from the grower to the consumer, right. and a significant part of this loss comes from what's called mismatch. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that we've had. Uh, uh, I would I wouldn't say good. The first part of the year was not easy in terms of commercial. Uh, traction because of what's happening in the market, it's nothing right. to do with here. Right. But Q3 and now Q4 are doing extremely strong, wow. including now in the war. Wow. So that's amazing. Wow. We're doing extremely strong. Re- uh, revenues are ramping up. Amazing. What's you the website? See, um, clarifruit.com. Clary, C L A R I. Ah, right. Clary, C L A R I fruit. Okay. I'll try to, uh, if you're watching this, I'll try to put all the comments in, uh, all the links in the comments down below. So we have right. to check them out. All right. Talk to me. Come on up. Other companies. All right. Another company. So you company. have Remilk? Yeah, Remilk. Remilk. That's in the first form. Amazing. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. So we got this year the, the, the regulation authorization. Wow. So that's artificial in, uh, dairy products. Right. That's okay. So, so essentially it's going to take probably another year until they can reach the, the, the stage where they actually can do the ramp up in terms of commercial. Okay. But uh, the, the product is ready. Okay. We have the, uh, the, the authorization to sell in Israel and we already next year are gonna have some significant sales and the year afterwards we're really ramping up. Okay, other companies. Um, another company that's amazing, it's a company called ITC. It's uh, uh, that we have in our fund. It's, uh, interse- it's, it's dealing with uh, optimization of uh, traffic at inter- at intersections. Oh, wow. In other words, instead of wasting your time at the red light, yeah. you're going to be able to, oh, wow. to 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 save a lot of time. That's, it doesn't only save your time; saves, of course, uh, uh, lives yeah. and accidents. Because I, I didn't know that, but uh, uh, most accidents actually happen at inter- intersections. intersections. Yes, it surprise me. Okay. Well, I didn't know that before. But okay. so the idea here, you can reduce them, and I'm very um, and. All kind of also, uh, uh, you know, uh, climate uh, 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 improvements because the, the the cars don't stay on the same place, so it means there's less CO two right. in the atmosphere. And I'm very happy to say that uh, ITC just a few weeks ago uh, won a tender oh, wow. in the U.S. Now, a couple of weeks now, ago, wow. uh, just, just a month ago, it was just before actually. Oh, but uh, 
but they won the tender and uh, in America in a place called Petrie, which is uh, next to Atlanta in Georgia. And uh, it's actually from there we're going to start deploying in the U.S. Okay. So so uh, it's an extremely extremely impactful company. Maybe one more Good. company. One more. One more company. Um, another let's say Actech. It's a company called Cdex. Also in terms of impact. I got Cdex. Yes. So the idea there is um, uh, to improve the yield of, of seeds. Yep. Amazing. All right. So that's just some of your companies. Yes. Many others. Shempel Capital. Somebody wants to come check it out. I mean. What is the opportunity? Can, are you looking for LPs? Yes, we are still looking for LPs, and I want to say also a little bit on the dynastic uh, um, uh, perspective, perspective angle. angle. Yes, I, we, we we need support now. Okay. All of these companies are going to need support, so there's no urgency in the sense it's not now somebody's about to die, thankfully, right. Right. but uh, they will be raising capital so, over the next. This few is months. the uh, this is a very unique opportunity, I think. Um, to do well, we need to make a good investment by doing good because yes. you're helping Israel. Yes, you're not donating money. There are enough. Listen, there are enough people out there donating millions of dollars to the IDF and to other things, and let them continue. And it's amazing. But if you're an investor who's looking for a yield on his or her money, yeah. a real return on investment, here's a way to actually help Israel and make a yield and make a return yes. on your investment. So it's a pretty unique opportunity. So if someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? LinkedIn or for you. I'm your white man on LinkedIn or I'm your Chumpel Capital. Yes. Your Chumpel Capital. Mail or just send your. Uh, Ping me and I'll introduce you. Ping so you so you, you you are you have room for more LPs. Yes. And um, in theory, you can also be investing. I mean, if of, course, of course, of course. Uh, and here I'm calling to the. Uh, I'm, I'm reaching out also to the Israeli companies. Right. Uh, we still have money to deploy, and uh, we are investing deep tech companies, Israeli companies, Series A. If you are. Uh, in that profile, then please reach out. We are waiting for companies to come. Unbelievable, Amir. This is this is exciting. And again, I know it's it's funny to say that, but but again, it's we're at a disadvantage because we're in a war. But that means there's tremendous opportunity. And yes. again, with God's help, I don't want to say definitely, but I don't think there's anyone who knows Israeli tech and has any doubt that we're going to rebound and then some, right? Yes. So it's an amazing opportunity. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll just you know continue to do our thing, continue to win this war on the battlefield, on the digital battlefield, on the financial field. I wanna field. add one, one last sentence. And um, uh, again, I have no doubt we will win. Uh, as, as you did, it's quite clear, nobody really has a doubt. But what we will need is to have a functioning economy. Right. Uh, we need uh, uh, to have jobs for all the people, by the way, who are going to come on Aliyah, who are going to come yep, to Israel. It's going to be big Aliyah. Yes, big we have no choice. So yeah. we, we, we're going to, to need jobs. Yep. We are going to need growth. We are going to need uh, uh, to carry on building on what has been built over the past 20 years and so, and, yep. and more. Yep. And to build, we need one thing. And as you said, it's not charity, it's investment. Right. We need to have dollars to put to work in companies to succeed. That's what we need. 100%. All right. So if you're looking to invest in Israel, you're looking to invest in a fund or whatever it is, hit up Amir. And Amir, keep doing what you're doing. Again, your job here as a VC, in my opinion, is no less important in terms of winning this war than the soldier on the battlefield. Because like you said, we could win the war, but if the economy, you know, Collapses. tanks. Right. Yeah. So you keep doing what you're doing. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. And together we'll win. Make sure he keeps doing what he's doing, right? All right, man. Thanks.